So let's think about the um, influence of climate on meteoric processes. So if we are in an arid climate, like we are today in Wadi Bani Khalid, what can we expect? Well, in an arid climate, we don't have a lot of water. We don't have a lot of precipitation. So really it means that the water rock ratio is relatively low. When the water rock ratio is low, in the phreatic zone, we have enough water to lose magnesium calcite. Remember, it's the first mineral to go away in meteoric processes, but we still preserve aragonite and calcite. In the Vedo zone, we can preserve magnesium calcite, aragonite, and any calcite that would have been precipitated. But the point is we have so little diagenesis that these things are preserved. And then at the surface, we have evaporation, but because we don't have a lot of water in the system, the, we form a calcrete, which is a, a cement zone due to evaporation, but this calcrete is pretty thin. If you want an example, uh, we can look at Saudi Arabia. Here's a good example of the type of meteoric uh, diagenesis that we can see in an arid setting. You can see that a lot of the bed forms are in the limestone, this is again the Jurassic Arab formations, are quite well preserved. And in fact, the detail of things like bioturbation in this case are extremely well preserved. So the rocks are not really destroyed. Most of the rock volume is still there. Now, if we go into a semi-arid climate, we have more water. And the implication now is that in the phreatic zone, which is saturated with water, we are left with only calcite. We lose aragonite, we lose magnesium calcite, we only have calcite. We have also the formation of caves, of tubes of dissolution that starts in this type of setting. So we have more dissolution, more evidence of dissolution at the water table. And in the Vedo zone, we preserved aragonite and we have calcite. And this calcite comes from the fact that the high mac calcite is re crystallize into low mac calcite because we have too much water to really preserve it. Now at the surface, because we have more water, we have the potential to having thicker calcrete, so thicker crusts of cement due to evaporation because we are still in semi-arid condition. And we can actually have thin soil starting to form because there is enough water for soil to be formed on top of this uh, calcrete. An example of this would be things like Southern Europe in Spain, or, or yeah, Spain is a good example, where you have the formation of karst, but this karst is not extensive. You can still recognize a lot of the features. And in fact, a lot of the karst we looked at together are semi-arid. For instance, when we were in Wadi Nakab in the previous lecture, this was a semi-arid condition in the Jurassic. Now, the the end member of this is, of course, the wet, humid climate. In a, in a wet climate, then it's a very extensive karstification. And extensive karstification means that we are losing everything, magnesium calcite, aragonite, uh, in the Vedos and the phreatic zone, and we only preserve and precipitate calcite. And also we have extensive dissolution, mostly along fractures, as we will see in this course and the next class. And, um, and of course, then we form at the top, because we have the dissolution of the limestone, the impurities that are in the limestone, so the clays, organic matter, etc., are concentrated at the top into a red soil, characteristic for this type of setting, known as terra rossa, literally in Italian, red earth. So this is what happens in wet climate and a beautiful, although extreme example is Southeast Asia with those pinnacle karsts. Here I'm showing you a picture from Vietnam. And these pinnacle karsts effectively are little mounds of limestone that are preserved. Everything else in between was dissolved and that's because we are in tropical climate with extensive precipitation of hot fluid that easily dissolve the, um, the carbonates. And if you look underground, you can find these beautiful cavities or caves, you know, man-sized um, cavities. And in areas, for instance, like the Jura Mountains in Switzerland and France, up to 40% of the mountain is represented by karstic cavities. So caves form a large volume of 
of uh, the porosity in this type of setting uh, if you have enough time for the solution to continue. And karstic landscape have characteristic features. For instance, we have dolin, which are depression at the surface, and that depression is an expression of dissolution in the subsurface. So either a little bit of dissolution, or in some cases, you can have a dolin right on top of a shaft that has not yet collapsed. And of course, that, that is quite dangerous. We can have vertical shaft, which are dissolution along vertical fractures, or we can have galleries that follow more or less bedding. And chambers, large caves can form through the process of collapse of blocks and dissolution of the limestone at the bottom with rivers running through these different uh, passages. In the phreatic zones, we'll typically have phreatic tubes, which are completely saturated with water. And so they, their, their pressure is at equilibrium with the, uh, the water pressure. So they tend to be a bit more stable than the Vedo's uh, caves. And of course, a lot of the surface water circulates through this system. And this is why in Wadi Bani Khalid, we can have water uh, year round. So this brings me to the summary for this second class on meteoric diagenesis. We've seen that different minerals have different dissolution rates. Magnesium calcite and aragonite are the first two to go. Calcite tends to be the more stable phase. We've seen that kinetics controls the rate of precipitation and the rate of dissolution. And so it's very important to understand that if you don't have a precursor mineral, then precipitation takes longer than dissolution. What really impacts also porosity preservation is the flow of the water and the saturation with respect to aragonite or a different carbonate mineral of the water because the higher the flow and the less the saturation, the more likely you are to dissolve and preserve porosity at the site of dissolution, even though it means that later in the process, you will precipitate a cement. And we've seen that what controls flow largely is climate and climate impacts water rock ratio and impacts flow. And so it impacts by definition, meteoric processes. So if you're in an arid, semi-arid or wet climate, things are completely different in terms of the extent of meteoric diagenesis. So in the next class, we will explore the specific role of fracture in uh, surficial burial diagenesis and the relationship between fracture and meteoric diagenesis, but also burial diagenesis. Wow.